but in this computer. Great, so welcome back. We are in this today marathon with our third speakers. Let me put it in slideshow from current slide and welcome Ina. So Ina, she is a, a cybersecurity consultant currently employed in Dolito. Um, I pronounce it in the Italian way, so probably in the wrong way. You can tell us later how it should be pronounced. So she has a rich background with over seven years in the education and science sector. And she, she you bring an um, unique perspective in the field of cybersecurity. Really interesting to understand that better. So in your day-to-day -day role, you assist companies and provide the um, cybersecurity awareness by training and guiding them toward achieving um, this um, ISO certification. You have done some fantastic accomplishment through your journey because you've been crafting, engaging security and awareness through those training programs, securing and maintaining these ISO certification for your clients. And you've been conducting these uh, risk assessments and implementing robust security control. So you have strong project manager skills and you have uh, technical expertise. And you say that you're always a step ahead ensuring that your clients receive the best solution, Tyler, for your unique needs. So we're very happy to have you today. And now I'm allowing you to share your presentation and starting to say that I've been currently in a cybersecurity training myself, and I understood that I do everything wrong. Everything you can possibly do wrong, I do it. I have very weak passwords, uh, including my family members. I, sh I use Google Drive, uh, I plug in the airports. So tell us more what I could do wrong. Welcome on stage. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for the event. I'm really happy to be here with all of you today and sharing my story. I'm just gonna quickly share my screen as well. Sharing my story, um, of uh, becoming a cybersecurity professional because I was not originally one. So I'm going to I'm going to start my presentation by saying that a career in cybersecurity is possible for everyone that is committed to uh, to achieve this dream, to achieve this goal and to of course help companies secure their their businesses. Now everything is online and everything like literally everything is online, uh, which means that by being online it comes with a lot of um, a lot of pos positive aspects, but with a lot of challenges as well. And one of them for sure is data security and cybersecurity. So we are out there in the wide world of internet and we, we, we assume we are safe, but sometimes we are not. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit of my story just as an inspiration for everyone, because I know most of us are internationals living and working in Finland. And uh, we have many things in common, I guess. So the the struggles in the beginning, the decision to come in a new country and start over again your life with a family or alone. Uh, it's a, quite a hard one. And we are all of us already uh, winners in that sense, because stepping out of your comfort zone and kind of leaving your own country and family and everything back and uh, coming to another country for a better career, better work-life balance, better future for, for, for your family and your kids is already a, a big win. So let me start from there. Um, I moved to Finland almost two years ago, so I'm a new uh, a newbie, I would call myself like that, and uh, uh, normally I'm originally from Albania, used to, um, to work in Albania as a teacher, school director, um, rela everything related to science and science projects, I hold the bachelor and a master degree in biology, and you'll all now wonder biology and cyber are not not related to each other, and you are right, they are not. Um, and um, I remember maybe um, almost three and a half years ago, my bank account got hacked, uh, and I received a call somewhere in the middle of the night from uh, from an assistant from the bank saying that my card was being used in some place in South America uh, for a transaction. Mm, and that was um, that was a very kind of big hit for me to realize that how unsafe we are online, uh, to realize how much data we 
we post online, we, we provide online for, for services and tools and how much we are exposed to those risks. And I started, okay, I decided, look, wait a minute, I have to kind of dig a little bit deeper and find how can I be safe online? Like how, what can I improve in order to be safer online? And then while learning, um, I thought that this is a great opportunity to change this and as, to, to kind of develop this as a career. So that's where all started with cyber. I attended a very, very, very good uh, bootcamp program in London for almost uh, three months and something. Uh, and uh, during the program, I got a lot of extensive knowledge about cyber, a lot of courses, not only technical, but also power skills, as we call them, and uh, support, um, one-on-one support. And uh, yeah, I started to feel like now I am uh, ready to, to move to the next step. And the next step was coming to Finland. Uh, meanwhile, after I graduated from the boot camp and did my Security Plus certification, which is one of the certifications you may go for uh, when deciding to, to work in cyber, I worked uh, for a company in the UK um, mainly as a, as a coach, uh, as a trainer. So I have helped many people in the past uh, with my experience as a teacher and coach to scale their, their career in cyber. Um, yeah. We decided to come to Finland and coming into a new country comes with a lot of challenges, ups and downs. Uh, I am a mom of a, of, a, of a gorgeous little girl. So we had, we had some time, we had some time to kind of uh, land our life in here. And after that, I decided that now it's the time for me to uh, go on with my career. And I joined Deloitte. Mm, this is how it is pronounced. Uh, the a couple of months back, and uh, I have been working as a cybersecurity consultant with various of of, uh, of companies, um, trying to kind of provide the best possible services for their cybersecurity posture. Uh, now, this will act as a as a guide. I thought it would be useful to kind of um, uh, to kind of walk you through the roles in cybersecurity and the the certifications you may need or the knowledge you may need and what are the skills you may need. Uh, of course, uh, after the presentation, feel free to ask any questions. I will be happy to, to share whatever I know about, about cyber and about uh, opportunities here in Finland as well. But this is basically only a, a, a small representation of the roles that, that, that are out there in cyber. There are more than 200 roles that you, you can kind of uh, work in the cybersecurity industry. And um, there is a huge skill gap now, not only in Europe, but all, all around the world. And many countries have been, um, have been kind of uh, addressing this shortage by different programs. Like, um, um, for example, in Finland, there is um, Women in Cyber Finland, which is a, a U EU branch from the Women in, uh, in Cyber Europe. And all these programs aim to involve more uh, women, to inspire more women to, to kind of pursue um, a role in cybersecurity. So uh, let's get back to the roles now. We have here some um, entry-level roles and some knowledge that you may need in order to, uh, to achieve those roles. So some of the, some of the knowledge are, network, are uh, networking, so security networking, software development, system engineering, financial and risk anal analysis and security intelligence. Don't, don't be afraid by those. They are not that scare, scary when you start kind of uh, digging a little bit deeper. And um, entry-level roles, there are cybersecurity technicians or as we call them analysts, and here is the role, and IT auditors. Um, intermediate level roles, we have cybersecurity analysts, cybersecurity consultants and penetration tester, which is a little bit more technical. And senior level um, roles, there are security, cybersecurity administrators, engineers, architects, or managers, cybersecurity managers. And uh, as I mentioned, these are only, only a few, a very few of the roles you may, um, you may pursue in, in cybersecurity. Uh, now let's move on with, and this is a scary <laughs> slide, I know, but this is only to kind of give you an overview of um, certifications out there. And as you see, there are a lot of certifications, which means that you have the possibility to choose one of them. You don't really 
um, need all of them. Uh, so for core skills, for getting the basis, if you are just starting in cyber and you want to know the, the, the very fundamentals, there is um, uh, a couple of certifications you can go for. One of them is A+, which gives the fundamentals in IT in general, not security um, in particular. There is Security+, plus, Network+, plus, Cloud+, plus, IT, which is mostly for project development and AI and blockchain fundamentals, which is a, a kind of a new, relatively new technology. You, you may have heard of Bitcoin and the blockchain is the technology behind Bitcoin. Um, now, if you wanna go a little bit more technical and you want to kind of be the, the techie, the techie person in cyber, there are a lot of other certifications uh, like uh, CEH, um, the Splunk edition, which is more for, um, for um, what we call in cyber is cyber offensive and defensive roles. Uh, CUSP Plus is another one. CISA Plus is mostly for cybersecurity auditors and penetration, pen test plus, penetration tester plus, another one. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of them, not to, not to bore you, but of course, feel, feel free to ask um, questions. Some of them regarding hands-on networking and programming skills. So if you want to work in pen test um, or in DevOps um, kind of fields or subsections of cybersecurity, these are some of them that you can go for. Linux Plus is one of them, the, one of the most known. CCNA is another one. Uh, now, if you want to kind of scale your, your career and uh, seek more management roles in cybersecurity, you will have to um, get an expertise in a certain field. And the, some of the certifications you may go for are uh, CISSP, CISM, CIPT, and uh, all of the others that are listed in here. One of the most well-known cybersecurity certifications is for sure CISSP. Uh, cloud computing is a very rapidly growing, um, uh, let's say, subsection of cybersecurity because now everything, almost everything is, um, is uh, migrated to cloud. And even if it's not, and there are some on-premise um, data centers, companies tend to have everything in cloud nowadays because it's much much more secure it um, kind of cuts off a lot of costs etc uh, so if you want to go for cloud computing skills the microsoft azure gives a lot of uh, the microsoft azure family of certifications gives a lot of uh, of knowledge about cloud security and now if you are more on hands on in artificial intelligence machine learning also artificial intelligence is now very rapidly growing uh, you may you may seek the cbt certification or one of the uh, certifications that are listed below the ai and machine learning is another one as well now we talked about uh, everyone can do it, but now we are talking about skills that are needed and certifications that are needed and this is the case in every um, I, I, I feel in every um, sector of IT. So you, you need the commitment, you need the motivation, but of course you need some skills at a certain level. The good thing with cyber, and I guess we, my colleagues can confirm here with IT in general, is that the technology is evolving so fast. So um, if you have no previous experience in anything related to IT, you are not starting from zero because you may always start from the current technologies. Some of the technologies that were used in 2010 or 2000 are a legacy and they are not used anymore. So you haven't really uh, kind of uh, lost anything without not knowing them. You have to keep up with the current technologies. And of course you have to have a, a kind of a very clear vision of what's the next steps in technology. So kind of avant-garde and trying to, to find out what's the next step so that you are prepared for what's coming uh, so this is uh, this is very important to to kind of uh, to understand that even if you don't have any skills or any IT background, again you may start from the current technologies, from the current threats, from the current risks, and you may scale your your career later on. Mm. Uh, now I call it in my coaching experience. Mm, uh, I call I have a formula for this, and we are using this formula with our. We have been using this, this formula with our um, our coaches for a long time. So it requires, yep, it requires for, we have a little guest also learning about cyber there. 
uh, it requires four elements in, in order to succeed and get the career of your dreams in cyber. And I'm not talking only about entry level careers. I'm also talking about scaling your 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 career. You have a, a couple of years, uh, let's say, experience in IT, and you want to transit into cyber. Is it possible? Absolutely, yes. So the four elements are skills, support, strategy, and motivation. So the SSSM formula, I call it like that. And now let's talk a little bit about skills. I have divided them into two, the power skills. I don't want to call them soft skills. They are really power skills. Like you are powerful when you have them and the technical skills. Um, and as we go with the power skills first, communication, of course, is one of the, like the fundamental skills you will need. In order to succeed, I think in every field, not only in IT, not only in tech, not only in cyber, like strong communication skills, good communication skills will, of course, give you the upper hand and will uh, help you uh, move, move along. Collaboration is another one. Uh, luckily, now everything is done in, uh, in um, teams, so you don't have to handle everything by yourself. But to, in order to have great teams, it requires a lot of collaboration, being a team player, sometimes being a team, team leader, but um, in a way that supports your, your um, other team members as well in order to reach your common goal. Risk management, and uh, by this I mean a lot when it comes to self-risks, self not only cyber risks. Adaptability is another one, being able to kind of... Um, move from one team to the other, move from one project to the other. And in consultancy, uh, this is the case almost every time you have to kind of move through projects really quick. So you have to finalize the project in a couple of months and move to a whole new project uh, with a whole new team working with the new client. So adaptability is, um, is a very, very important skill. And of course, critical thinking. And um, I would add here being organized, kind of having a very clear uh, vision of what you want to do daily, what you want to achieve in three months, what you want to achieve in six months when it comes to your career, when it comes to your projects as well. So all of them, I'd call them power skills, and I'm sure I have skipped some, but these are the most uh, most important ones, at least that they have helped me kind of uh, mastering those skills have helped me in my, in my career. Uh, from the other side, when it comes to technical skills, some of the, some of the skills you may need is scripting, which is the very uh, kind of a fundamental um, uh, fu fundamental skill you may need in some roles, not in every role. So again, no need to worry if you don't have any uh, kind of knowledge in JavaScript or any other scripting language. Controls and frameworks, and I have listed some of them, NIST and ISO as the most important ones. I have a lot of experience working with ISO controls and our ISO is an um, international um, a framework, international benchmark for um, information security. Um, so controls and frameworks are a good fit if you want to move on to a GRC, governance, risk and compliance uh, kind of role. So basically what I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing right now, and I'm going to open up a little bit more about, about that. Of course, information security fundamentals, you will have to know a little bit of information about uh, all the cybersecurity fields, because when it comes to, for example, risk management, when it comes to uh, controls and frameworks, you need to have an overview and uh, um, um, let's say a basic knowledge of all the other cybersecurity domains like cloud security, uh, like network security, like um, incident response, uh, business continuity and crisis management and all all the, the other subsections. Incident response is another one technical skill, and this is for the people that want to kind of be more involved into how do we respond in case of an incident. So if something has happened, uh, our company's data have been compromised. How do we respond to that incident? Do we have everything? Do we have backups in place? Do we have the uh, continuity um, the um, BCM, the business continuity management plan, and can we uh, get to our company up and running again in case of an incident? And uh, you may have heard, if you have been kind of uh, uh, wandering around about cyber, you may have heard a lot of incidents regarding ransomware lately uh, in Finland, in Europe, and in, in the world, uh, in the world as well. So ransomware is one kind of uh, incident that is commonly spread, and in case of a ransomware. Uh, by a um, kind of by, by a way, by a malicious way, 
um, threat actors are able to, com to compromise your systems, to get you locked out of your systems, and then they ask for a ransom to give you your, your, um, your pass keys again and your, your data back again. So this is about incident response, a more technical role, let's say. And threat intelligence is another one. Threat intelligence is the process done before an incident happens. So how do we kind of, uh, how do we follow up with, uh, with uh, hacking groups? How do we, are we aware of what's outside as a threat? And are we ready to mitigate those risks and to kind of um, uh, respond to those threats if and when they, when they happen? Of course, a lot more when it comes to cloud security, when it comes to network security, they are all different. But as I mentioned, the good thing is that in companies you work as a team and especially in middle size and big companies, you work as a team. So you don't really need to worry about covering all of them alone. Of course, you need to have a basic, very basic knowledge of, uh, of, of all of them in order to kind of to be able to help the team, support the team in the best possible way. Uh, the second S is about support. Um, so you need the SSSM and the first S was skills. The second one is support. And uh, what I mean by support is that the, the journey of changing your career or upgrading your career is a tough one. It's not an easy one. So you will need, of course, continuous feedback from someone uh, who can be your colleague, can be your friend, can be a team you are working with, etc. You may need, and it's very beneficial to have one-on-one or group coaching. So doing this in a group of people like we are today, international women that want or are already in the tech industry. So this is very important, having a group to support you and to kind of uh, to make you feel that you are not alone in this journey. And of course, joining as much as you can groups and forums that talk about uh, what specifically interests you in cyber? If it is threat intelligence, then find those groups and forums and join and you, you will get um, weekly updates, newsletters, information about the, the topic. So kind of um, um, try to familiarize yourself with the field you are just about to enter. The, the third S in the SSSM formula is strategy. You need to have a strategy and you need to have a focus. As I mentioned, the cybersecurity field is a huge one and there are more than 200 job titles out there, but you need to pursue or to focus on getting one and being good at one, not being unicorn, not being the best out there, but being good at one. Uh, so focus is very important. Research about the, the, the job title you are aiming to. So how much, um, let's say, uh, job offerings are there about the title? How many companies are there about the title? Doing this pre-work will help you land the, um, not a job, a random one, but the job you really want to do. Networking is key. And here in networking, I have uh, included in person or, or virtual events. So getting, getting there to those events, showing up kind of shaking hand with people. We are not in COVID, so we can shake hands with people now, luckily. And um, um, when it comes to networking, LinkedIn is a powerful, I would call a very powerful tool to use also, kind of showing up there that you are also part of the field. You are interested in helping companies secure their businesses. So uh, I give a very strong focus to uh, LinkedIn and of course now uh, in-person events as well. And the last... Uh, the last, let's say, component of my formula, it's motivation. Uh, as I mentioned, is a, is a tough journey, sometimes can be a long one, can be a tiring one, because we are also kind of handling other things at the same time, family and other responsibilities. So uh, you will need to come up with strategies and with kind of tools that will keep you motivated. Uh, one of them, I called it self-motivation. And this is kind of, a, uh, this is a hard one to achieve, kind of being, focused, being committed to, I will do this, I deserve to have this career, I deserve to have this role for this and that reason. Uh, so in order to, to achieve the self-motivation, you need to be connected to your why. Why am I doing this? Why am I aiming this career? What will happen? How this will change my life? How this will change my uh, uh, quality of the time I spend with my family. So come up with your whys. Why do you, do you really want to do this shift in your career? Uh, positive mindset, trying to put up the pink glasses and see uh, 
see things around you positively. This will help you avoid stress, avoid drama, uh, avoid uh, disappointment. Of course, not seeing everything positive, but trying to capture the positive in everything. And uh, the last one, find yourself a role model. And if you don't become one, so uh, this means that there are less women, unfortunately, still less women in, in tech in general, in IT and in cyber. So uh, if you don't find someone, then become one for the, for the other people to come, especially for the, young, uh, for the young generations that are growing up, that they can see that women can do uh, everything they want and they can achieve everything they want in their lives. And I guess this was the, the, last, the last slide so that I give enough time for, uh, for your questions and for kind of more clarifications regarding to my role, if you want to know a little bit more about what, what I'm really doing and what is the real work uh, in, a, in a week. But of course, feel free to ask your questions now. And I guess we have some of them in the chat. But this was basically the presentation I had, I had for you today. Thank you so much, Ina. That's so interesting. And I love your framework. Um, uh, oh my goodness, sorry. My brain just like stopped raining. <laughs> but there was a question about between AWS and Azure, which one is more popular in Finland? Do you have any insights yes. to yep. this? Yeah, of course. AWS is more popular in US and Azure and Microsoft in general is much more powerful in Europe in general and in Finland in particular. So most of companies work with uh, Azure. Of course, if companies have these geographical dispersions, so they are found in Europe and in, um, in US at the same time, they tend to combine those technologies. So they may have data centers and clouds operating in AWS and they may have others in Azure, but for Europe, and for Finland, uh, Microsoft Azure is the is the is the best kind of certifications to go and uh, the best skills you can you can um, you can gain. Oh, I was muted. So thank you for sharing those insights. Okay. And Syria has uh, the next question. Yes. Yep. Please. Yeah, I, I actually have two questions, uh, mm -hmm. uh, quick big ones both. <laughs> uh, first, first is that you offered that you might open up a bit like what you do and what your what work week looks like. That would be extremely interesting to hear. Mm -hmm. And another thing that uh, I was wondering, uh, because uh, I uh, run a program, we have a program uh, that has 80 learners, uh, women who want to start a career in tech in Finland. Mm -hmm. but most of them are actually internationals okay. so I would like to hear your insights also like uh, what kind of type of organizations maybe to look if you're an international interested in a cyber security uh, job but also in general if you're a Finnish person like you know uh, what type of organizations look for cyber security specialists, uh, like uh, what industries and so forth, because yep. we, we know very little about that because it's a security field, you know, it's oftentimes not so much advocated, like, for example, testing and programming mm -hmm. and so forth. So yep. these are my two very big questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, no, that's okay. Thank you for your questions, actually, very valid ones. I'm going to start with the second question in order not to forget. <laughs> Uh, any details so um, basically the industry every industry nowadays is looking for cybersecurity professionals and as I mentioned they are in a journey to migrate every or possibly every of their daily operations into something related to technology and computers and IT uh, so tech companies are uh, the, the best uh, kind of the first and the best uh, fit for cybersecurity Role. So they are constantly looking for people to, to work in security. Uh, financial institutions are also uh, constantly looking for people to, to work in security related issues in their institutions. So uh, every tech and financial institution you may think uh, in Finland uh, should have now uh, that we are talking many open roles in cybersecurity related, uh, related um, positions. 
consulting is another one and the uh, consulting you may think of every consulting company in Finland not only the big four like Deloitte KPMG but uh, all the other local consulting companies as well are looking for cybersecurity professionals so uh, basically there is a huge demand I would call it like that uh, it becomes a little challenging to secure your first role because you're, it's, it's an entry level role. But when you do that and when you kind of uh, try to, um, to enter in a, in, a, in a position, then the scaling happens very, very quickly. So it's, it's a little bit struggle to kind of get your first role, especially when you are an international, because networking is one of the, the most important things, as I mentioned. Uh, and with, when you don't have the right network of people, you may have a little bit difficulties. Of course, this means that you just need to uh, shift your strategy, not get kind of uh, uh, disappointed by that, not get kind of uh, frustrated, but change a little bit your strategy. And what do I mean by that is uh, be more visible in LinkedIn, sharpen your skills as you are waiting for, for the that ideal role, entry entry level role for you. Try to um, get as much as possible involved in local um, kind of events and venues regarding security, even though you are not working in security. Go out there, meet people, uh, talk about your interest about cybersecurity. Something important that I want to add in here is that many companies are nowadays uh, organizing or financing those recruitment agencies to find people that are willing to shift their career to cyber. Uh, we had during this year a very successful collaboration with the consulting, with a sorry, recruitment company in Finland, and we ran the program in order to find uh, career changers that want to contribute into cyber. And uh, there are many companies out there that for sure are doing, and I am aware that, that they are doing the same thing. So find, the, try to be aware of those opportunities. And when you find them, apply for them and show your commitment, show your why's, why you are the, the right fit for the position, why you want to kind of uh, to get that position. This is the second question. And I hope that, that clarified a little bit. Uh, and when it comes to work week, uh, in consultancy, and this is not the case with other industries, but in consultancy, it's your work week and work month is very dynamic because it's related to the project you are working on. But I'm going to kind of uh, try to summarize a typical, a typical week, um, um, assuming that I am participating in a cybersecurity roadmap project. We are kind of uh, helping a client and the company uh, a supposed one to kind of uh, put together a cybersecurity plan, or as we call it, a roadmap. Um, the beginning of the week, this typical week, uh, starts with getting to know the company and the client, getting to know their needs when it comes to their cyber posture, uh, re, um, conducting a gap analysis, which is kind of what they have in place right now when it comes to technologies, people, skills, tools, and what they may need. Uh, to in order to kind of uh, improve their cybersecurity posture. So maybe the first two or three days of a typical week will go uh, with documentation review and conducting these gap analysis. And of course, a lot of meetings with, uh, with, the team, with other team members in order to coordinate and in order to come up with this whole uh, vision of uh, what the company, where the company is standing right now, where they want to be and how can, how can they achieve that. Um, and the projects basically go on with um, a lot of meetings with the client, trying to kind of uh, make them aware of the situation they are right now when it comes to cyber and what they can improve when it comes to anything related to, to cybersecurity, what they can improve when it comes to technologies, what they can improve when it comes to communication, uh, when it, what can improve when it comes to, for example, in, um, incident response and all the other needs of the company. So basically, in a week, there are a lot of client meetings, team meetings, individual work. You are conducting a part of the gap analysis, and you may kind of uh, divide your your tasks in the team and take what what you feel comfortable about. For example, in my case, if it is related to policies, frameworks like ISO or NIST, I would uh, I would kind of uh, go on with that, and someone from the team which which has more. Um, or a, a deeper understanding when it comes to, for example, incident response, they, they would take the, that part. So the good thing is you can divide the work and you can kind of come up with, a, with the best result as a team. Uh, and this is 
how a work week looks like uh, in, in general. But as I mentioned, it's very dynamic because it changes when the project changes. There are different requirements from one company to another. Uh, the companies are totally different. The industries are totally different. So you have to be aware that you will have to kind of um, adapt very quickly to the new project that is that is starting. Thank you for sharing. Very insightful. And it sounds like a, a lot to juggle and a lot of different kinds of groups to work with. Um, kind of bouncing from that, we have a question in chat. Can a cybersecurity be combined uh remote and on-site work so mm. how much do you work from the office or remote do you have freedom in that if you can elaborate on that and then after that talk about how to get a job at Deloitte <laughs> yeah well uh the the work is hybrid and uh, this means that you have a lot of freedom to combine your your work week and um, again depending on the project the week the work can be divided kind of um, for example, three days working from home and two from office. At some cases, you will need to be more in, um, in let's say, in field work. So, for example, visiting the clients' um, um, offices and working from there. So that's also dynamic. But of course, you have the freedom to uh, to the hybrid to the hybrid work. If your work is more self work, you have to kind of come up with a report. You have to come up with the gap analysis you are doing. Of course, you can decide that. I'm going to do it from my home, from my laptop, because I, I get less distracted and I can kind of uh, complete everything much more faster. And um, if the work then is more regarding meetings with, with the clients and performing workshops, awareness campaigns and trainings, then of course you would need to kind of visit the office or the client's premises, premises as well. But of course there is a freedom to... Uh, to organize your work week as you wish in terms of the hybrid mode. And uh, Great. Yeah, and then about uh, how would you advise people to go about getting a job at Deloitte? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, um, actually, this is a tough question. <laughs> why is it tough? Uh, because this starts with, uh, why do you want to work in a consultancy company? Uh, and what I mean by that is having very clear uh, having very clear what is Deloitte doing, doing the research first. And if you have done that, and if you already know what Deloitte is doing, and Deloitte is um, the best uh, of the big four consultancy companies in the world, not only in Finland, but if you want to, um, if you still, still are convinced that you want to work with such a big organization and consultancy is what you want to do in cyber, so cyber consultancy, because I don't know if the question is about Deloitte or cyber in Deloitte, but I'm, I'm just assuming that is Deloitte in general. Uh, so having very clear if that's, the, the good, that's a good fit for you, is that a good company for you? Or do you feel, do you feel more comfortable with middle size, small companies, et cetera? When you have decided on that and we, when you are very clear that, yes, I want to work with a global organization, with a big one, uh, and I kind of, uh, I am, uh, well prepared for the dynamics going on, then of course the best way is to um, uh, to network with people already working there. And this is not the case only with Deloitte, but with every other company. Like get to know people that work there, ask them how their work look, looks like, so that you know uh, you know in what ground you are stepping in. Follow them, of course, in social media and in their website because they post every Wednesday, I guess, is it working Wednesday? We have this uh, this day that we announce the the new opportunities when it comes to jobs. And that's a good that's a good fit. And um, yeah, of course, as I mentioned, if they have if they do any events, if they provide any events, especially for women, and they do, I know they do, then of course show up on those events and uh, and kind of be there in order to get to know more people. Uh, crucial Networking is crucial. So if you achieve that, that networking online or on site, that's going to be a very big plus for you to, to, to kind of to, to, to take it from there. And I see- Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, and uh, Syria had her hand up. Yep. Sorry for asking so many questions no, um, no. i hope i'm not somehow discouraging the uh, participants to ask so 
Oh, please raise your hands or use chat so that your question won't be missed. But I had a question a couple of years back. I was speaking to people. I was talking, thinking about my own career transition and where to go. And then I was also thinking about uh, joining uh, maybe a consultancy field, maybe some big uh, organizations. And then somebody from uh, one big uh, consultancy company, I don't remember who uh, and from which company, but said that this is really a very intensive and competitive, you know, especially when you're working in one of those big uh, companies. So, you know, since we already then had two kids, now we have three kids. I kind of realized that maybe, you know, the intensity at this particular time when, you know, in my life is not the best uh, option for me. Mm -hmm. So perhaps maybe you can kind of uh, tell, first of all, do you agree or disagree that it might be a bit more intensive uh, uh, place or field to work? And what would be your recommendation, for example, for somebody who has uh, small children to take care of? Should they look maybe for smaller companies? which are a bit more maybe, you know, kind of calm in, mm -hmm. in, in regards to the work space, uh, phase or, uh, or what, what would be your kind of insight from this field? Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. I'm just going to ask for only 10 seconds to uh, get my charger because my, I don't want my laptop to die now and to, to leave this question unanswered. And I'm coming back, very valid question. Just, and sorry for, sorry for that. No worries. In the meantime, we can answer another poll. So we would like to ask you in which IT role are you interested? And if you don't find the IT role here, then you can input in the chat. So we will have a better understanding on the why you join us today. And uh, I am back. Thank you. You're welcome. Then oh. we can discuss the result of the poll after that Ina and her presentation. No, actually yeah. discussion. Thank you, please. Yes, uh, so the question was about um, being a competitive environment. And with, when, with, when it comes to big companies, there is, of course, uh, competition out there and there is pressure because uh, big organizations uh, like are built to 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 kind of uh, operate their businesses like that. Uh, I would connect my answer again to your focus and your why. Uh, so what is that you really want? Do you want um, a competitive environment when you can progress fast, you can show your skills, demonstrate your skills, and you can kind of get the get the roles you want? Or do you want a job that is stable, that you have your tasks, they don't change much, so you are more of a, of a kind of a, a strict person when it comes to the things you want to work to work with. So this will uh, make a huge change in then your um, your next steps. If you want to go for a big four company or a big organization in general, that's going to be competition. That's going to be pressure in a way. Uh, not a ne not in a negative connotation because of course you may stay where you are for a lot of years, you may stay as a consultant or as an entry level position for many years. And this is your option and your kind of your, your, um, uh, your decision. But if you want to scale your company in a big four, of course, the pressure in a way and the competition is there, we have to be aware of that. Uh, but yes, as I, as I mentioned, you have to kind of re reconnect with your why. Why do you want to work with a big organization? Why do you want to work with this certain organization? How can you contribute to that? I strongly believe that when you have your why there and you are uh, kind of convinced that that's a powerful one, then the pressure or the competition will not stop stop your way or make you feel demotivated or make you feel tired or make you kind of um, uh, make you feel um, in a way overwhelmed. Uh, this is an individual assessment that everyone has to do with themselves. Uh, what kind of life, work life we want? Do, do we want a more quiet one? And when you have your tasks and they don't change rapidly, then of course, a middle sized company, a small company would be the best fit. Do you want a dynamic environment when you can grow, you can improve, you can constantly learn? 
uh, you will challenge yourself to, new, to learn new things and, of course, to kind of uh, scale your career and upgrade the, your career, then go for a big organization. Um, that, that would summarize my, my at least my uh, understanding to, to your question, Sidia. Yes, very valuable. Thank you. And I also then back then realized that I want something more flexible where I can decide on my own, like when and where I work. And that's when I ended up being a social entrepreneur. But but that's very valid that you have to think about these things like where am I in my life? What is the situation? What how many hours I can and want to put into work and so forth. Exactly. And so forth. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Amazing conversation. We are now at the cutoff point at 45 minutes. If we want to hold on to that, I'll give Lucia the power of <laughs> deciding over whether we cut it off here or if we want to take more questions still. And of course, Ina, because you are here as our guest and yeah. we value your time and your insights tremendously. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should take a break because uh, we still have a long day and we actually will uh, answer the poll, give the result of the poll when we come back from the break. So mm -hmm. I will stop now the recording. Thanks a 